I'm Ken Jones, local historian, born at the Stocking, Little Dorley. Today, I'm going to accompany you on the Dorley Heritage Trail. The old police station stood directly opposite Station Road and was built by 1856 and was closed in 1976. This replaced the lockup on King Street, which was built by 1843 and sold in 1872. The cosy cinema was Dawley's first. The Royal appeared later and was quite an event in the life of the town. Erected in 1921, made of corrugated iron sheets with an imitation half-timbered plastered front. It was, in fact, a former cinema transported from the army camp at Prees Heath. It stood directly opposite the Royal Exchange Public House. And this was Taylor's Bike Shop. Walking down Dorley High Street, I remember some of the shops from the 70s when I was at school. This was Francis's, where I used to go to get my hair cut. Francis's the barbers. Francis's shop has the distinction of being the oldest business operating in Dorley High Street, having been in the same premises for over 150 years, as old as the High Street name itself. Barbara Priest ran this shoe shop for many, many years, sadly closed now as she died not very long ago. This is the old Market Hall building. I remember in the 70s it used to house a gas showroom then. There was certainly a wool shop. The Market Hall was a handsome building of red brick with arcaded um, facade, vaults underneath and a turret with bell and clock. The bell and clock was a gift of the town by Lieutenant Colonel William Kenyon Slaney, who was described as Lord of the Manor. The building's facade has been changed over the years and the bell tower removed, and today the market hall functions as separate shops. The road, when I was a schoolboy, was a shop where you could go and buy your school uniforms called Colin Evans's. I recall that. If you look to your right, you will see a building called Matthew Webb House, which used to be the entrance to Chapel Street, and the site of the Methodist Chapel was to the left of Chapel Street. Um, where, as youngsters, Paul and I... Oh, I haven't introduced Paul today. Morning, viewers. <laughs> Here we are in Dorley. Yes. We used to go to a youth club in an old uh, chapel building. And there were public toilets here at the edge of this car park. We're just, just reminiscing about the places that uh, of our childhood when we were at school at the Phoenix. Pity we're so vague, really, isn't it? Pity I'm so vague. Golden rose, wasn't it? Was it fabulous, do you think, John? I would edge towards that, yeah. Yeah. One of the shops, anyway, used to be the Picador Cafe where we'd go from school for a, for a burger or a ham roll and a coke. One of these shops would have been the famous Chippy Wright's chip shop. Chippy Wright was a lovely man, bald-headed man, lived in Dorley Bank, and he used to drive an old Volkswagen car. He was a lovely chap, and he had a, a world-famous chip shop, and it was on this side of the road. Polly's Diner yeah. used to be the post office. That's right, it I'm was. I'm looking for some clues. <laughs> There's nothing no, no clues, but you're right, that was a post I office. I remember the yeah. ramp going, yeah. going up to the entrance. And where those black things are, most probably, was where the post box was. Quite the possibly, post yeah. Yeah, yeah. that was the post office. This cost cutter used to be a shop called Frankie Batches, where you could go for sweets and stuff. I think it was a news agent's. And there was also a, a Norgroves, the butchers, along this road somewhere as well. Road there going down to Portley Road. Captain Webb, the Dorley man, was born in the town on January the 19th, 1848, was the first person to swim the English Channel, unaided, in 1875. He lost his life attempting to swim the Niagara Rapids on July the 24th, 1883 his memorial erected from public subscription in 1909 originally stood in front of the lord hill public house and had three gas lamps later changed to a single electric lamp 
The memorial has been removed a number of times in its history, but was finally refurbished and re-erected at its original location in 2009 on its 100th anniversary. It bears the inscription, Nothing great is easy. This building was erected as a congregational chapel in 1866. It closed during 1880s, but the building was used in the 1890s as an undenominational mission. During the 20th century, it was utilized by the number of non-religious organizations, including Shropshire Library Service. Right, Paul, start, start of a turn. This used to be a sweet shop yeah. where we come and got sweets and ice poles, ice Four pops. Four jacks for a penny. Yeah. It? What, was the, what was the name of the woman who ran it? Oh, I don't know. Mo Do you know that? Yeah, Muddy Fens. This was Muddy Fens sweet shop. It had a little thin door you had to squeeze through. <laughs> it did it? indeed. <laughs> no more than two school children the, allowed at the time that's it, or what? the size of it now. Yeah, that's it, yeah. Muddy Fens sweet shop. Well, where Paul's standing now is the site of the old Dunkow pub uh, at the top of the hill here. The wall had a bowling green behind it. Uh, it's now all been demolished, of course. And then up here was where we used to wait for the buzz. The old town hall. Originally built as a temperance hall in 1873, the building subsequently passed to Dawley Urban District Council, who adopted it as the town hall. The council let the building for public meetings, concerts and dances. It was a variety theatre with regular shows in the 1920s and 30s. After the Second World War, a nonconformist group used it, and in 1958 it held Roman Catholic services because of the lack of a Catholic church in the town. Just come down New Road now. Don't recall us calling this new road, it was the Dunkow Hill one, it, or yeah, Dunkow Bonk, Dunkow yeah. Bonka. And this is, uh, this house at the bottom, one of our school teachers, Mr Holston, who was, re he was really, he was well liked, wasn't nice he? For, he was a bit of, bit of a Mr Chips character, he was an old fashioned man, but he was liked universally Very at school. Right yeah, Eric, wasn't it? Yeah, Eric Holston. Well, as you can see, this is the site of the playing fields for the new Phoenix School. Uh, we used to go to the Phoenix, where, but it was on a different site in Manor Road. So we're in Manor Road, aren't we? Let's see humanities block. Yeah, this is one for posterity now, before it gets demolished and raised to the ground. This is the Phoenix School as we knew it. Uh, the generation before us knew it as Dawley Secondary Modern. We knew it as a Phoenix Comprehensive. And it's all about to be knocked down. What that old insignia, the Phoenix Badge. Well, I bet that'll end up on the new school somewhere. It's a model railway. Now we used to have some... We used to have some buildings there. Classrooms, yeah. Single storeys. Yeah. Similar to the huts. It's now been moved yeah. to the bottom of Dawley. Um, and this area we used to call the firs. It was a, a big steep hill full of fir trees in our youth. Finger Road Primitive Methodist Chapel survived for more than a hundred years, from 1863 to 1976, when it was closed and subsequently demolished in order to widen the road. I do remember as a child coming to Finger Road Methodist Church. My mum was a local preacher so she probably preached there at some time or other in the 60s and I seem to remember there was a little fire in the middle of the church like a stove with a chimney going up to the roof. Yeah, it was... Did I? Yeah. Well, and we reckon it was roughly where the, this bus stop is now. Chip shop. Right next door to the oh, house. Oh, right next door yeah. to the house. Yeah. Oh, so a bit further along. Right up against the house. Beautiful chips, though. <laughs> this is the site of the old Queen's Arms public house. Another one that's been demolished and nothing been put in its place. Seems to be a bit of a trend here of pubs being demolished 
but for no apparent reason. A school board was set up in the Dawley area on the 16th of April 1875. It comprised seven members and one of the first schools to be opened was Langley School in 1878. It cost £3,000 and accommodated 600 pupils. Another 100 metres on and just past an interesting pair of cottages on the right hand side of the road is a bungalow and just before that are the remains of an old gas lamp and an air raid shelter in the field next to it. You're going to see many old gas lamps. The track crossing the Hinksay Road at this point is the route of a tramway, certainly in use in the early 19th century, presumably for the movement of raw materials and goods. The tramway was known locally as the Jerry Rails, the now demolished nearby public house. The White Hart was referred to in the 1861 census as the Tom and Jerry, called locally the Jerry. The name was obviously associated with the tramway and other features in the area. Purpose built in 1956, the Ever Ready Battery Factory had a relatively short life. It closed on the 25th of February 1994 and was dem demolished shortly afterwards. Most of the workers were women from Dawley and the surrounding area. Hingsay village originally comprised two rows of workers' houses, double row and single row, constructed in 1815 and 1833 respectively on land belonging to the Botfield family. Double row consisted of 48 back-to-back -back cottages and single row 21 cottages to the right of double row. Later, another row of 10 larger houses was built at right angles to the end of single row. It was called New Row or Ladies Row and appears to have been provided solely for more senior and skilled members of the workforce. Turkey Blast Furnace and Chemical Works included four furnaces on site, blown in in 1827, and the Chemical Works for the period 1886 to 1932. The land was leased by the Botfields from Isaac Hawkins Brown of Badger. You can just make out behind the trees a brick wall. This was the site of the Sturchley Forge and Nail Factory. Land purchased from Lord Darlington in 1826 enabled William Botfield to construct a forge and rolling mills here two years later. Pig iron from the nearby Sturchley blast furnaces was transported to the forge for conversion into roll bars. As you continue ahead, but still looking right, you will notice some tunnels in the wall structure. It isn't known what these were for, but supposition is that they may have been tramway tunnels or air shafts. This is 1788. Yeah. So it's either Sturchley Bottom Pool or it's Inksay Pool. Take your pick. Mm. The Sturgeley pools were probably constructed as reservoirs to maintain the level of water in the adjacent Shropshire Canal. When you come to the end of the pool, you should turn right, keeping the canal to your left and the pool to your right. Follow the path between pool and canal till you come to a small T-junction where you should turn left. Churchley Station opened in 1861 on the route of the London and North Western Railway, LNWR, branch line to Colport. The station was renamed Dawley and Sturchley in 1923, before closing to passengers in 1952 and to freight 12 years later. Built in 1840 for the Wesleyan Methodist worshippers of Sturchley, the chapel has the curiosity of actually being over the boundary in Dawley, 
This came about because the landowner, Bariah Botfield, would not sell land to the Methodist Nonconformist movement. Observe on the left-hand side of the road a Southall sign, behind which was the site of the former Castle Mine, so-called because of its proximity to the site of historic Dawley Castle. The mine was owned by the Coberdale Company and wound both coal and ironstone. You will notice on your right, by the wall of the church, some remains taken from the Inksay Church of England Mission.